This morning on a special edition of Close Up, the two candidates for mayor in New Hampshire's largest city square off for a debate in our studio. We'll take on the biggest issues facing Manchester and the candidates plans to deal with them. Incumbent Republican Ted Gatzis was elected mayor of the Queen City in 2009. Prior to that, he served in the state Senate, representing Manchester in Concord for almost a decade. Gatzis is a graduate of Central High School and the University of New Hampshire. He also has a background in business, as does his challenger in this race, Democrat Joyce Craig, the same opponent who went up against Mayor Gatzis in 2015 and after a recount lost by just 64 votes. Craig was a Manchester City Alderman, serving in that role from 2009 to 2015. She also served a term on the Manchester School Board before that. She graduated from Memorial High School in Manchester before getting her degree from UNH. Good morning, I'm Adam Sexton and welcome to our debate between the two candidates running for Manchester mayor. With me is my esteemed colleague, WMUR political reporter John DeStacy. Good morning, Adam. Good morning. And before we get started, a quick work, word on format. John and I will both be asking questions this morning and the candidates will have one minute to respond. Rebuttals will be allowed as needed according to our discretion. So with that out of the way, let's get started with our candidates. Challenger Joyce Craig and incumbent mayor Ted Gatzis. Both welcome. We flipped a coin to see who would get the first question and it goes to Ms. Craig and the question is about the opioid epidemic that is plaguing New Hampshire and Manchester very specifically. So this year, according to the Manchester Fire Department, there have been 715 suspected overdoses in the city. That's compared to 672 overdoses during the same period last year. About a week and a half ago at the annual Child and Family Services fundraising dinner, the city's police chief Nick Willard had some very strong words saying, quote, I feel in spite of our heartfelt efforts, we're making little difference in stemming overdoses or shrinking the addiction pool. And if making little difference continues, then we may well have a generation that will be lost to this drug crisis. Ms. Craig, what would you be doing differently here if you were mayor? Well, Adam and John, thank you for having me this morning. Um, that's a very good point. Uh, we do need to do an awful lot more in terms of educating our young children in our city. I've gone on ride-alongs with the police and fire department, and I've seen firsthand what they are dealing with and what our community is dealing with. I've seen uh, folks that have overdosed, and there are children in the apartments. And we are not helping those kids. I absolutely agree with Chief Willard that we need to do a better job with education in our schools, outreach to our community, um, and also with helping them through this trauma that they're experiencing so that they understand that this isn't something that's right, they shouldn't be doing it. Thank you. Same question to you, Mayor Gatzis, but first, do you agree with Chief Willard's assessment? Well, I can only say that the police department has instituted the ACERT program to take care of those young children that they find in situations where these drug situations happen. So the police department is on the cutting edge. They've brought something forward that means an awful lot to the parents and the children in our community. It's a heartbreaking tragedy, tragedy that we're losing so many young adults. We have to do all we can to make sure we fight this opiate epidemic. And I certainly am glad to see what the president did just yesterday with uh, Governor Sununu and Chief Goonan being on hand to making sure that we declare this a state of emergency. Something I asked him for back in August, the same thing I asked Governor Hassan for last March. We're gonna to go to the next question to Mayor Gatzis. Okay, Mayor Gatzis, good morning. Uh, when, it comes good morning to the, when it comes to the opioid problem, there has been a consistent call for more money to help. Is there a scenario where you would raise taxes or fees to pay exclusively to fight the opioid epidemic? Well, I can tell you that I met with Governor Sununu just uh, last week, and he appropriated $150,000 uh, towards the opiate epidemic that we have here in Manchester. After sitting with him and showing them the numbers, that 2,700 people have come to Safe Station, 65% of those people are from other communities throughout the state. The state of New Hampshire has to step up because we have the services here in Manchester that are saving lives. 2,700 people is what came through safe stations and that we moved into different places at Serenity Place and also at uh, Helping Hands. Okay, uh, Alderman Craig, simple question. Are taxes too high in the city of Manchester? 
Taxes, we have to make sure that they meet the needs of our, our community and that they we can provide the services that are necessary, the immediate services that are necessary. So as mayor, I'll present a budget that is under the tax cap, and I will do everything I can to present to pr protect our taxpayer dollars. I stand behind my record as an alderman, uh, where I have proved that I can do that, and I will continue doing that as a mayor. I have gone and knocked on hundreds of doors throughout the city and talked with residents um, young families to senior citizens and I've heard their concerns and I am confident and as are they that I will present budgets that again meet the needs of the taxpayers but also provide the necessary services that we need in our city. And Mayor, are taxes too high in the city of Manchester? I'm hearing throughout the city that taxes are too high. There's no question that folks are concerned about their taxes. And with Joyce Craig, there's going to be tax increases. Just a few days ago we had a debate. And in that debate, I made a mistake and called it uh, good plans. And she challenged me and said, no, they were good ideas. An increase in taxes is not a good idea, whether it's a, a sales tax, uh, a tax on lunches for children, or bringing forward a 4.5 budget that's over the tax gap. Those aren't good ideas. Ms. Craig, 30 seconds to respond. Thank you so much. Um, what the mayor is referring to is a memo that I put forward as a school board member in 2008. I asked the community for ideas on how we can save money in the city, presented five pages of ideas, but this mayor, because he can't stand behind his own record, is lying about mine. As an alderman, I never presented any of the ideas that he is talking about. If I stood behind them, I would have done it when I was six years as an alderman in Manchester. But what the mayor can't step away from is the $15 million that he lost when he served here when Sending Towns left our school district and that's put us in the financial crisis that we're in today and kids don't have books and we still have potholes in our streets and at the same time he spent $1.3 million to renovate his office in City Hall. We need to stop this mismanagement. Mayor, 30 seconds. Let's understand one. something. You know, the mayor didn't spend $1.3 million to renovate his office at City Hall. That was an appropriation that came forward to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. The Aldermen voted to refix re re things at City Hall, like a roof that was leaking because we had to catch water in the Mayor's office from a leaky roof. So when my opponent wants to say the Mayor spent $1.3 million, I invite you to City Hall. I invite you to my office, look at the same used furniture that I'm sitting in that I brought in eight years ago from a company that donated it. The same furniture. Come in and see it. The Board of Mayor and Aldermen voted for that appropriation. It's a bond to the, fix up City Hall that hasn't been touched for 20 years. We are going to move forward. The, we the have limited time The mayor put forward here, so. that money, and I have to say, the roof was $6,000. This was a bond for $1.3 million, most of it cosmetic. And when you go walk around our schools and you see that windows don't have shades or they're ripped down and there's leaking roofs and so forth, we need a mayor who's going to look at where we can best spend our money and be reasonable about this. You know, we Thank keep you. Talking we need to move about forward schools. to our next question, economic this development here. This question does go to you, Mr. Mayor. The Department of Defense has recently announced a new initiative known as Army that's launching here in the Mill Yard uh, under the supervision of inventor Dean Kamen. Uh, his company, DECA, is involved in the initiative to manufacture tissue. Basically, uh, biotech industries could definitely spring up here in the Mill Yard. But what can you do as the mayor of Manchester to make sure that the city fully captures uh, this massive investment that's coming here? Well, no, there's no question that that project is the exclamation point on the Mill Yard. People are already calling, companies are calling from other states to relocate in the city of Manchester so that they can be close to the Army project. The next renaissance that I see is the Gaslight District, the, just the district that's just above Granite Street that is going to grow. There's an awful lot of space there that can be redeveloped and moved into some of those small businesses coming here. There's no, the, absolutely is important that we look at the Army project and grow it and make sure that the mill yard can continue to grow as we see it today. Ms. Craig, same question. How do you capture this investment? Sure, thank you. I mean, it's amazing opportunity in Manchester. We have a new industry uh, that's coming right into our city. So as mayor, I would uh, move forward on new, new legislation that was passed in Concord to allow uh, commercial and manufacturing new companies coming in for um, to have tax credit uh, on, on the buildings that they're um, 
creating. Um, so that would encourage people to come into Manchester. I also would work with our schools to ensure that they have the course offerings that they need to, to roll into the jobs that will become available in Manchester. I think that's a critical point here that we're missing out on. Um, and I would be a mayor that would work with uh, Dean Kamen and with Army. Um, so when he's going out, he would have a partner in trying to uh, bring businesses into Manchester. I thought it was really interesting when Army was announced um, in the city that, you know, the mayor said it's great, but he knew nothing about it. I think that says a lot about leadership in our city and the missed opportunities that we have. Mayor, well, I can tell you that I've worked very closely with Dean Kamen in the past. I convinced him to make sure that every fourth grader that we have in the city of Manchester gets to go to the Sea Science Museum at no cost. I also convinced Dean Kamen to spend $480,000 to bring the first robot, junior robotics uh, teams to the city of Manchester in the fourth grade. We then said that we would allow those students an hour a week to do the robotics in their classroom. When Dean came and met the students at the Sea Science Center for the first time, there was a young man there that said, when I graduate from college, I want to come back and work for Dean Kamen in the city of Manchester. That says it all. I've worked with Dean Kamen. We've had great ideas that we've brought forward. And things happen when you have a leader that understands how to work with people. Next question from John okay. on infrastructure. Yes, uh, Ms. Craig, infrastructure uh, question. With the economy continu continuing to be stronger, <clears throat> and as Manchester grows with new housing and hotels, what can you do specifically to alleviate transportation headaches and avoid future transportation headaches in the mill yard and in the downtown area? One of the key things that I hear from uh, businesses in the mill yard is a lack of parking. Uh, we're fortunate enough that uh, Southern New Hampshire University is building a 1,700 space garage over by their buildings, but we're still going to have issues in the north end of um, the mill yard. Instead of saying no to every idea that comes forward, I would be a mayor who would work with those businesses and try to come up with a solution to alleviate that. Because if we really want the mill yard and the gaslight district in downtown to thrive, we need to address this parking issue. Also, what we've seen in Nashua is that uh, Mayor Donchus is working with a company to bring rail in um, uh, from a private uh, perspective. And that's something that, again, I would work with. Um, you know, we don't know what's going to happen there, but I have an open mind, and I think it would be tremendously helpful and beneficial to Manchester residents and businesses in the mill yard if we could get rail here. And Mayor, uh, again, Im improvement of infrastructure in the mill yard and downtown? Well, I can tell you that I've met with the developer that's talking about a private rail coming into Bedford. We met, uh, we brought in, I brought in uh, the, the Manchester Transit Authority department head, had him in the conversation to see what we could do. I said, why aren't you coming to Manchester? And he said, there's a $20 million bridge renovation that we would have to do. Let's see how it's working in Bedford. Let's see if we can provide the transportation. It's six minutes from the city of Manchester to the spot that they're looking to put in. It's still five years away. And it, we, let's not have a misunderstanding. It's not about rail going back and forth into Boston. It's one way, bringing people here and then bringing them back. Let's do a quick lightning round and talking about the future a little bit. Mayor Gatsis, do you think uh, that the city should be installing free-to-use electric car charging stations at parking spots or in parking lots in the city? Well, it's certainly something we should look at. We brought forward, we're the first community in the state of New Hampshire that uh, I championed LED lighting. With that project, we brought forward and saved the taxpayers of this great city $600,000 a year. So if it's about free charging stations, let's see what it's going to cost us and let's see if it makes sense. Ms. Craig, what do you think? Yes, I do. I think there are grants available to help us get there and the community is asking for it and I absolutely agree that we should have that. And on a lighter note to you, Ms. Craig, uh, what is the city's greatest hidden asset? The people. We have an amazing community, and if you look at what we've accomplished over the last year, some of the main accomplishments are because of community members. We have a bike sharing program in Man Manchester. We have a new cultural district. Those are all things that have grown organically. We have a group that I've been participating with called Manchester Connects, trying to develop the riverfront and connecting it to downtown. Again, all on their own uh, with no help from City Hall. Um, so I, I think that that's our biggest um, greatest asset in our city and I always talk about and think about if they had a mayor in the city hall who would support their efforts we could do so much more. Mayor Gatsis, the city's greatest hidden asset. Our students. I believe with the School of Technology that's now a full-time four-year high school, the students there are coming out, they're understanding that they can be a beautician, culinary arts, they don't go to college. Those students are there to come out day one and work ready. I think the steam ahead at McLaughlin School 
is a program that if you listen to the accolades from the students, you would say this should be in every single one of our junior high schools. I agree. We should move it forward. If you went to Parker Viney and saw the innovative learning that those students are having, you would say that's a great program. Let's bring it forward. We brought Amy Allen in as the assistant superintendent so that she could take that to all our elementary schools. The city of Manchester is a great city. I will never put it down because I believe in this city and I love this city. Let's stay with the issue of education and a question going to Ms. Craig. Uh, according to state statistics, Manchester's four-year cumulative dropout rate is higher than just about any other school or district in the state at 13.45 percent. Uh, Nashua is at 5.99 percent. Keene High School, 4.01 percent. How can this be improved? So I have to start off, as you mentioned earlier, I'm a proud graduate of Manchester Public Schools. I have two children who graduated from Central and a daughter at Hillside now. So I truly believe in our public education in Manchester. And I know that our administrators, our teachers, our paraprofessionals, everyone in our schools are working very hard. But they don't have the, the resources that they need to adequately teach our students. In some cases, they don't have books. We don't have the necessary professional development necessary um, so teachers know the most up-to-date um, programs that they should be teaching. Uh, in terms of graduation rate, I think we have to think earlier on. Uh, when you look at the um literacy levels for our kids, they're, they're terribly low. Third graders in Manchester are only reading at, 28% um, of our third graders are only reading at grade level. We need to address that because if we just continue to push those kids on, they get frustrated and they drop out. Um, and we also need to, con to, to continue to provide alternative programs in our high schools. Mayor Gatz, how does the city improve its dropout rate? I can only tell you that the School of Technology is a great program. That's for students that don't like to sit in a classroom in a row and learn. Um, whatever they're learning at the time. They can go into the School of Technology and have a very versatile education. It's about the things they want to do. If they want to become a welder or a, a carpenter, they have that ability. That's what we need to do. We need to offer students uh, every opportunity we can find for them and bring it forward. Not every student is going to college. The students that are, are great students. You don't need to help them along because they help themselves along. I think it's important that when you talk about our education here in the city of Manchester, you look at the educational opportunities like West High School with the STEAM Ahead program that I went out and raised $90,000 so the students there could get dual credits and get credits at no cost and possibly remove a full year of college cost out of their um, high tuition rates. And we'll stick with the education issue and we'll be able to discuss more on this, but you mentioned the Parker Varney School. Uh, they've launched this new Mastery in Education initiative. The idea is simple. The kids who show that they've mastered a given subject or a concept can advance at their rate, while the teachers uh, can also focus on those who are struggling to ensure that they fully learn uh, the lesson. The school has seen rapid growth in student achievement. I think they've dropped calls to the office for discipline by 55% there. What do you think of this approach and should this be something the city is doing citywide? And as I said before, that's why we've brought Amy Allen in, who was the principal of this school, to be the assistant superintendent. She implemented this at Parker Varney, and I can tell you I was there just two weeks ago. I was amazed at the students and the growth that they have. She was telling me about a student that they were having a real problem with when it came to discipline. Now that student is growing and learning, and he possibly could be doing work in the second grade at a fourth grade level. So these students get a chance to move around. They take the kindergartners and the first graders, and they put them together, second and third, fourth and fifth. I can tell you that I was in a classroom with 48 kids and two teachers, and you would have thought that there was individualized learning with every one of those children. They broke out into groups of three, and they were talking about projects they were working on. One of the projects I heard that they were talking about removing some of the walls over at Parker Varney, and I said to this, the principal, I don't think that can happen because we just put these walls up a few years ago so that we could separate classrooms. Ms. Craig, how do we take this model citywide? Sure. Well, I first want to say that Ted Gatsis has been mayor for eight years, and he's had an opportunity to scale Parker Varney and has not yet. So if this is so successful, why has it taken so long to do that? Um, I don't think that it's appropriate that it matters what school you go to in order to get a great education. Um, 
Parker Varney is doing amazing work, and I would like to see that um, spread across the district. But I think it's important to note that they get an awful lot more funding than other schools in the district. Um, they're Title I, and they have grants. Um, if you look at other schools that don't have Title I, um, they don't have math coaches, they don't have uh, paraprofessionals. So they don't have the resources that Parker Varney does, so they don't have the same level of education. And we really need to have an honest conversation here about how we're providing education um, to our children in our city and how every student in our city can receive a quality education no matter what school they're going to. Mr. Mayor, you were just, just last week, um, you know, Bob Mongan in an article that was in the paper came out and said what great schools we had because there was a project up on North Elm Street that was building 25 homes between $500,000 and $750,000. And right now, the developer, even though he can't take applications, he said there's over 40 people that are interested. So people understand that we have great schools and we have great education here in the city of Manchester, and we will continue to bring forward great opportunities for students because they are our hidden gem in this city. We're going to move to the next question. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> switching gears a little bit to uh, politics. Mayor, last year you ran for governor, losing in the primary to um, Governor Chris Sununu. How would you address those voters who might think your interest in higher office last year signals a less than full commitment to being mayor of the city and more of a political ambition? Well, I can tell you, John, that uh, last May, when I was in the middle of that campaign, uh, Chris Hickey came forward to me in April, talked to me about safe stations, told me it was going to take six to 12 months to implement it. I told him he had three weeks because people were dying and we had to put it in place. The first day that Chief Goonan was the chief of the city of Manchester Fire Department, we instituted Safe Station. I did that while I was campaigning. I did that because I believe that the city of Manchester could make a difference in the opiate epidemic that we have. So again, I'm not looking for higher office. I'm looking to be right here. I believe in this city and I love this city and I will continue to fight to keep our taxes low in the city of Manchester. It's all about taxes. That's what this election is about, and it's about taxes. And Ms. Craig, uh, throughout this campaign, you've had a number of uh, out-of-state, somewhat nationally recognized Democratic politicians like the mayor of Los Angeles and a few others come into the state to campaign f uh, for you, raise some money. Uh, why have you had these national figures come in into the city of Manchester? They really have no tie to the city or to the state unless they have their own future ambitions. Is it purely for fundraising help, or is there more to it than that? No, you know what? I welcome anyone who's going to come into Manchester and takes interest in what we're doing, and anyone who wants to help in terms of moving Manchester forward. I think it's obvious from both people living in the city and people outside of the city that our city is struggling. Our schools are struggling. Our test scores are going down. We've seen an increase in um, overdoses through the summer and last month a record high. And we're consistently seeing mismanagement coming out of the uh, mayor's office. Um, you mentioned him running for governor. He was vacant from Manchester for about eight months out of his first year term of mayor. And, you know, We've seen the fire chief have to go to the press to keep a fire station open. We've seen the police chief have to go to the AG's office to ensure that our domestic violence cases are being prosecuted. And we saw that the mayor said nothing when there was a rape at West High School when he fully knew what happened and didn't educate parents and didn't ensure the safety of kids in that school. That is unacceptable. Mayor guys, it's 30 seconds. We have mayors coming in from other states that believe in sanctuary cities. I don't believe Manchester should ever be a sanctuary city. I've not heard Joyce Craig deny, denounce sanctuary cities. I can tell you that as I move forward, I believe in this city, and we're going to make sure that we fight for everything that we can do. I, didn't, I was not vacant when I was running for governor. I was in this city doing double duty. As I said, Safe Station came forward. That didn't just happen by accident. Ms. Craig, you were invoked to take 30 seconds. Sure. I think it's very important that Manchester has a full-time mayor, a mayor who wants to be mayor, doesn't want to be governor, doesn't want to be congressman. We need a mayor who's going to be here working every day, every hour for the people in Manchester. And regarding sanctuary cities, I've answered it a number of times. I would not suggest that Manchester become a sanctuary city. It would put federal funds at risk. Um, I agree with the way that Chief Willard is handling the situation here, where they don't proactively ask, st ask status of um, people. People. So I support Chief Willard's uh, policy. Mayor Gatz, this is a brief response. I'm all set. 
Okay. We're going to our final question now, and uh, this one will be going to Ms. Craig, I believe. There is a perception among some in New Hampshire that Manchester has too much crime, its schools aren't the best, and some neighborhoods are run down. As mayor, how would you convince people that that is not the case? I would work hard, very, very hard, to fix the issues. I think that the only way we can address some of these issues is to um, talk about them and then we can bring solutions forward. I've put forward plans to address the schools, the crime, um, the neighborhoods. I think it's very important that the mayor of Manchester be out on the streets, be present, um, participate in cleanups, um, be available and accessible and that's not happening today. So perception becomes reality and um, we need a mayor who has the energy and vision to address the challenges in our city and make our city better. Mr. Mayor, how do you combat that perception? Well, I can only tell you that crime is down in the city of Manchester. And, you know, my opponent continually says things that are untruths. People ask me if there's three Ted Gatzes because they see me at every single event. Anytime I'm invited to an event, I'm there. I'm there to participate in our community. I think the vibrancy and the energy that I have certainly is not surpassed by anybody. So I can tell you that Manchester is growing. There are great things happening in this community, and people are loving what they see. The downtown is a new renaissance, and we have to continue to keep that going. Ms. Craig, 30 seconds to respond. Sure. You know, there's no doubt that the mayor shows up to every ribbon cutting, but the mayor of Manchester has an opportunity to do more, to go on ride-alongs with police and fire, which he refuses to do, to go into schools and spend a day with a teacher to see what they are going through, to understand what's happening in the garage over at the, um, on Valley Street. The mayor of Manchester needs to understand what's going on within the city workers and then within the community, and that is not happening today. There you go again, Joyce. <laughs> you know, I was the one that brought forward the municipal complex. We got that done on time and under budget. I saw the conditions that our employees were working in, both at the police department and at the municipal complex. And the ones at the old highway garage were awful. We had to change that atmosphere. So I went out and did something about it. I brought back bonds that were less than 1.5% so that that project would come in on time and under budget. All right, so we do have to take time now for our closing statements. Uh, we do have uh, each candidate making a statement here. We do begin with Mayor Gatzis. Thank you. I want to thank MUR for the opportunity of being here this afternoon. And I want to tell you that this campaign and this election is about trust. Who do you trust to fight to keep taxes down? Who do you trust to keep the opiate epidemic in check and making sure that we can find things that we can improve on? Who do you trust to keep the renaissance going in the city of Manchester? It's an election about trust. And with that, I ask for your vote on November 7th. Thank you and God bless. Now a closing statement from Ms. Craig. Thank you. Manchester faces an important decision on November 7th. We can continue down the same path we've been on for eight years, or we can go in a new di direction and build a stronger Manchester. Our city has great potential, but to get there, we need new leadership. I've put forward great plans, which you can read about at JoyceCraig.org, to improve our schools, to keep our neighborhoods safe, to combat the opioid crisis, and to protect city services. I'll work hard to make our local government uh, more transparent, and I will take care and end the mismanagement and wasteful spending that we've seen at City Hall, and I will always protect your hard-earned tax dollars, and I ask for your vote on November 7th. Thank you. All right, we thank the candidates for coming today. Incumbent Mayor Ted Gatzis, Challenger Joyce Craig, we appreciate your time and your willingness to inform the voters with us here today. Thank you. And that wraps up this special edition of Close Up New Hampshire. Thank you, of course, again to Mayor Ted Gatzis and Challenger Joyce Craig for their participation. And thank all of you for watching. We'll be back here next week. Have a great Sunday.